All right. I've been doing a lot of thinking, so hear me out on this. Well, first of all, I know this sounds totally off-brand for our channel. I think the reason you subscribe to Altcoin Daily, generally speaking, is because we do the research every single day, and then we make the case to you every single day as to why I think Bitcoin will succeed. I mean, we don't necessarily go into every video needing it to be bullish, but based on the research that we've done, it just that seems to be how, how the research, it indicates a bullish future, in my opinion. So this video isn't meant to negate the past research or the past videos we've done. Make sure you watch the whole thing so you can truly understand what I'm saying. But here's the thing. This is what I think you need to understand. Bitcoin's success is not a guarantee. It's not a certainty. This doesn't need to happen. Yet, in the same breath, you know, I'm not here to say Bitcoin is dead or anything absurd like that. In fact, it's just the opposite. What I'm saying is this. Just because Bitcoin isn't dead doesn't mean that Bitcoin has to moon or it doesn't mean it has to increase in value over the time frame that you have in your head. Why do I say that? Why do I say that? I'm probably in the top 20% of people in the world who can articulate why Bitcoin is needed. I can talk about why Bitcoin has value. I can talk about why Bitcoin will succeed. I can articulate or reason this better than most people because I do it every single day on this channel. And I've been doing it more and more in real life. The problem is this. When I talk to no coiners about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, I get a surprising amount of apathy. Most people, when I talk to them, they just don't seem that interested in getting off zero when it comes to Bitcoin. And that surprises me because I, I tell them, I explain to them why Bitcoin isn't a bubble. I, I talk about how it's scarce, permissionless. I, I talk to them about why Bitcoin has value, the fundamentals, the network effect, the on-ramps. I tell them this stuff has never been better. It's never been greater. And you know what? They just don't seem that interested. They just don't seem like they have a sense of urgency to get off zero. Hey, by the way, hopefully you appreciate me still keeping things real. I mean, please still support the channel. If you appreciate me being real, give the video a thumbs up, like the video, and then let me be clear. What I'm saying is Bitcoin is still alive. Bitcoin is not dead. In fact, we're up 150% this year. Fundamentals have never been better, but and this is basically the point of this video. What if our time frame is off? What if we have to wait a lot longer to see those massive gains? I mean, the road to riches isn't going to be paved with moving sidewalks, right? I mean, do you think it's going to be easy changing the status quo? Do you think it's going to be easy changing people's perception of what money is? So I know most of you want something like this. What I'm proposing, what I'm saying is possible is that we might see something more like this. But here's the good news. This is the good news. Bitcoin doesn't need new people to work well. Bitcoin's already working well right now. What Bitcoin needs is the people who are involved right now, they just need not screw it up, right? As long as we keep Bitcoin decentralized, we keep Bitcoin permissionless and all that stuff, Bitcoin will abide, Bitcoin will continue to work and Bitcoin will prevail. And that's a good thing because this tech is only gonna get better and more user-friendly. Here's the thing. A lot of people think where we are right now is like 1994 of the internet, and then you and me are waiting for the 1999 bull run. You know, that's something I've thought from time to time as well. But in 1994, the internet was already a couple decades old. You know, Bitcoin's only been around for one decade, actually just about only 11 years. What if we're really in like 1980 of the internet? Maybe we just need time. So what I'm saying is I think it's important not to overextend yourself. Stuff like this takes time and that's okay. We'll be okay. Just don't overextend yourself. And now let me know what you think down below because this is very different from our usual videos. If you asked me right now today, I would still say yes, I am very long-term bullish. I mean. Nobody knows that better than me on Bitcoin. I, th I think the, the world climate, the macro events happening right now combined with the fundamentals happening with Bitcoin and the value Bitcoin provides, I think there's never been a better time for it. All I'm saying is, what if we are too overzealous with our time frame? I know that we're all thinking about this four-year cycle, 
which looks like a really good possibility at this point, but it's not a guarantee. And we just need to keep that in mind. Don't go all in thinking by 2022, you'll be a millionaire. Um, that's what I think. And hopefully you appreciate that. By the way, everything that we just went over, all the thoughts I just shared with you, they're only coming from me, Aaron. You know, there's a whole other half of this altcoin daily team, my brother, Austin, and he has his own separate opinions. Although I think generally we agree. I'm just saying not, he doesn't necessarily think the same way that I do. And while we're with me giving my thoughts, let me give you my, let me restate my overall thoughts about the cryptocurrency market because Contrary to popular belief, I am not a Bitcoin maximalist. I know most of our content on our channel, um, I like to talk about Bitcoin. It's what's most interesting to me. It's, it's because I'm a, I'm a Bitcoin fundamentalist because I think Bitcoin has a much better chance of succeeding for, for reasons we go over all the time. If Bitcoin has a one in 100 chance of succeeding, all these altcoins, they have a one in 1000 chance or a one in 1 million chance. You mean not good like one out of a hundred? I'd say more like one out of a million. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! You know, for this whole year, I've only been cost averaging Bitcoin. I haven't bought any altcoins all year. But in the future, I think there will be a time to buy those alts. And let me tell you my plan once again. Let's just use XRP as an example. First of all, if you think banks are truly going to adopt XRP, then maybe you want to get in now because you believe in them fundamentally. I personally don't believe banks are going to adopt. I personally don't believe banks are going to adopt XRP on a fundamental level, but I could be wrong. I'm only a man, you know, there's plenty of things could happen in the space we just don't know about. But let me tell you when I would be interested in buying XRP, because XRP, whose all time high is $3, um, Ripple, the company has a huge marketing budget. There would be a time where I'd buy alts like XRP again. And this is what I'd have to see. I'd, I'd have to see either one of two things. I'd have to see either a banks um, actually using the XRP token. I'd actually have to see the XRP token having a real utility and any of these altcoins having a real utility, real use. Um, and then that would indicate to me that I was wrong on XRP on a, fu on a fundamental level and maybe I'd take out a position. Or the other way I'd have to invest in any altcoins is if I see a trend change in the altcoin market. So far this year, Bitcoin, and just, I mean, it's really only Bitcoin has been the only one that broke the trend and Bitcoin is in a bull market. We don't know about these altcoins. There have been some outliers like Chainlink or, or what have you, or Litecoin at the very beginning of the year. Now Litecoin is not doing well. But generally speaking, all these alts are still tr trending down. So and that indicates to me, there's not a lot of new people coming into the space because new people, it's hard to explain Bitcoin. New people are going to look for the next Bitcoin and then that's when we're gonna to start to see these illiquid altcoins. Many of them are like penny stocks. That's when we're gonna see them pump. So in order for me to invest in XRP, I'd actually have to see real utility and real use, meaning real adoption by banks and use by banks, or I'd have to see a trend change in the price indicating to me that new people are coming into the space trying to find the next Bitcoin. And that's my general thoughts on this whole market. Um, you know, they say, well, we really haven't found a killer use, uh, a killer dap for, um, you know, crypto yet. Money, money is the is the killer dap, it's the killer use case, and Bitcoin is, is doing that. Now, people like Roger Ver would tell you, well, you know, Bitcoin isn't as fast or as cheap to send as Bitcoin Cash. Well, that's, that's because Bitcoin Cash and basically everything else is a lot more centralized. Bitcoin needs to be decentralized and permissionless, and it will always have a use in today's world. At least that's what I think, and I, I think you know what I'm talking about. Let's take a quick look at our Twitter. I recommend you watch, go on our Twitter and find this video right here. I tweeted it about 14 hours ago. Hell of a shit show. No common ground found between anybody. It was a panel, it had its recent panel, it was just uploaded yesterday, Tone Vase, Bobby Lee, um, you know, Fudster, Noriel Rabini doesn't believe in crypto. 
Brock Pierce, and then also Craig Wright in Tone Vase and Craig Wright sitting right next to each other. I think this was an hour long panel. Everybody talking over each other, everybody sending snide comments to each other, no common ground found with anybody. It was a hell of a show, hell of a shit show. All right, that is it for me today, my friends. This is Aaron at Altcoin Daily. See you tomorrow.